Okay, let's type this Renault contract because I really need him to play for the All Whites one day. We've got 20k spare in our wage budget at the moment. Let's try and make sure we can up that wage by 10k like he wants. Let's just sort out here on the clicker. What, why is this not working? What, why can I only offer him less money? It makes no sense, right? That's it. Where's Bill? I need to phone about these finances. It's a joke these days. I'm working within my budget. I literally made money the last transfer window, Bill. Help me out here. You said you wanted to win when you came to Auckland. Hello? Hey, Bill. It's uh, Sean here, you know, the manager of the one team you actually own that, you know, wins trophies. Uh, look, I'm trying to sort out Ronaldo's new contract. He wants a bit of a wage rise. I want to make him an all-white one day, so it kind of works on both ends. Even though I've got spare wage budget, for some reason, the computer won't let me offer him more money. So can you please sort that stop, out? So I've stop, stop, the wage stop, budget. stop, stop. You cannot offer him more money because we are reducing the wage budget by another 40,000 pounds. Bill, wh why are you doing this? I made a profit in the last transfer window for you. I'm doing my bit. It's you guys who are in the wrong. Sean. If we don't do this, then the club may go into administration. Administration? Can't be that bad. We're winning trophies. I mean, we win these next two games, Bill, and you've pretty much got over a million anyway for us winning the A-Leagues. Just use that money and let me get Renault on a new contract. Sorry, Sean. Bill? I've got other things to do. Don't you hang up on me, Bill. Bye. Bill? Man. He's so gross. There's a party in the streets and the city's on Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 34 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with AFC Auckland. Come up today we're going to play our last two games of the first half of the season with our A-League club team. They are against Melbourne Victory, that one at Mount Smart, and then we take on Sydney FC. If we can win both those games, we'll be in a very strong position and should hopefully be able to make our way through the second part of the season a bit quicker than we have in previous years, albeit... Because of what you see on screen, that might also not be the case. And also a recap of the most recent international window as well with the All Whites we did take on Iraq as well as the United Arab Emirates. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so or really are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but at the end of last week, we did play two games with AFC Auckland, and they were against the Wellington Phoenix as well as Melbourne City. If you missed that episode, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. A bit happened off the back of that before this came in that we'll cover off soon, but obviously this is the big news going in. So today's episode, we could potentially be heading into administration here at AFC Auckland, which is entirely not my fault. I've been sticking within the budget at all times, but apparently other people at the club have not. We are £19 million in debt and apparently making losses of around about £850,000 a month. Hopefully that will change soon when we start to enter competitions like the Australian League Cup, as we found out last year. You actually get quite good money for doing well in that Australian League Cup and also potentially a little bit of money as well through our participation in the Australian Cup as that starts to reach the latter stages as well. But fair to say, financially here at AFC Auckland, we are not in a good state. And to be fair, even before this, you could kind of potentially see it coming as our wage budget that got reduced by £40,000. It was sitting around about £100,000, albeit we had about 20 of that spare. They reduced it to £60,000. So because of that, what I've had to do is move a lot of our transfer budget over. We had about £550,000 spare. We've shifted a lot of that over because it did mean the wage budget was around about 17.5 to 20k over with that change that was made. It's not too bad now, but we are over it slightly, which might mean we need to make some moves potentially in the upcoming transfer window, which I think we'll be coming back for in tomorrow's episode as well, of course, as our youth intake for this fourth season of the save. But better say things financially here at AFC Auckland are not going well. Here's what the overall picture does look like. You can see next season's wage budget as well. That is going down to £61,000 a week. Might have to make a tough decision soon about players like Ronald. He's been great for us so far this season. We'll just find him here. Unfortunately, we can't renew his contract at the moment because he wants a rise to £20,000 a week and we couldn't even afford that back when we had that spare money in the wage budget, let alone now. So it might be a bit of a tricky situation with Ronald 
on that big wage, we might have to let him go for the future of the club. He's worth about £1.2 million in terms of a release clause and is wanted by some clubs over in Saudi Arabia. Might have to have a look around when we do get to the transfer window and maybe try and find someone just as good who will be available for a cheaper price so we can get some money into the overall bank balance and also for a much lower wage. But unfortunately, I think Ronald might not make his way into the All Whites team and the Savers contract does expire before he does his five years for residency here as a New Zealander. And that won't happen with the wage situation, wanting that nearly doubled on that current wage. So Ronald might be someone, unfortunately, who we do look to let go of in the save in the upcoming transfer window. A real shame as well, because this season he's been absolutely superb for us. But yeah, the finances in a bit of bother here at AFC Auckland. They might not get better until Ron is gone. But we've played five games off the bag of yesterday's episode and two of those were in an international window with the All Whites moving on to something a bit more positive here with the international team. First up, we took an Iraqa team above us on the world rankings. This was a very tight game, but thankfully, just with about a half hour left in this one, Ben Old coming off the bench makes his way down that right-hand side. Floats went into Chris Wood, of course, brilliant form in the previous game we played against Venezuela, where he scored four goals. He continues that great form and scores the winning goal. That's a massive result for us there away from home against the team who I believe at that stage was 62nd in the world. So another big win for us there with the All Whites, even though that one a lot tighter than some of our previous games. To be fair, stats-wise, that very even, fortunately, one of our shots on target. The few was that one through Chris Wood, and we do pick up that 1-0 win. And off the back of that, we also travelled away to then take on the United Arab of Emirates. Had to put out a slightly rotated team for this game with some players still tied from that Iraq clash, but thankfully early on, didn't look like it would matter. Cullen Macau it started this one. Nice cut in there from the left-hand side and puts that one bottom right corner to give us a 1-0 lead. But unfortunately, shortly off the back of that, British tries to head that one clear, but not very well, unfortunately. And the UAE there through Pereira put that one away to make it one all. And only a few minutes later, the UAE here actually did grab a lead. Eric plays that to Khaled and Harib just in a ton of space. They actually subbed off both our wingbacks off the back of that goal because they weren't doing too well. We were 2-1 down for a long time despite the fact we were well and truly on the front foot, but thankfully Nico Kerwin to Garbutt and then Sloan Rodriguez. We grab a late equaliser and pick up a 2 all draw. The UAE just behind us on the world rankings, but a draw not too bad at all, albeit stats-wise definitely a game that we should have won. Hopefully, you can see all that above my face cam. Might even move that to the right-hand side of the screen so you can see those stats. That was a little bit disappointing off the back of that win over Iraq, but still, not a bad window. A draw against the UAE and a win over Iraq away from home. And what that meant for our world ranking is that we are now inside of the top 70, ranked 67. Unfortunately, didn't even spend a brief period of time in 69th, which would have been quite funny, but we'll see if we end up back down there at some stage, but continue to move our way up the world rankings off the back of that good World Cup that we did have at the start of last week. So it was a good international window there with the All Whites. Also, you can see Joe Bell, the captain these days, Chris Wood, did hand over the captaincy off the back of the FIFA World Cup. George McDonald, vice-captain, he's quite good at leadership and also our best player. And also played three games with AFC Auckland. We'll just switch now back to that mode. And two of those were in the A-League. Unfortunately, actually dropped points off the back of that win over the Wellington Phoenix at the end of last week. A one-all draw against Adelaide United. I was quite disappointed with this result, especially considering the stats, but unfortunately conceded in the first half there through Zukov, but grabbed one back in the second half through Justin Keep. But really a game we probably should have got more out of, but dropped points there, albeit it was away from home. Thankfully, lots of the chasing pack also dropped points on that match day, so it didn't hurt us too much in terms of our lead on top of the A-League. Not that that was really ever in doubt with the big gap that we do have. Then took on Old Xavierians, I believe is the pronunciation of that one, in the fourth round of the Australian Cup. Bumped those guys 6-0. Ben Wayne with a hat-trick. Justin Keat with two. And also De Hotman de Villiers. He popped up with a goal. It does mean we're through the fifth round of the Cup. And yet again, take on a team that we should be bumping and back on track against Adelaide City in their first season up in the A-League with a 4-1 win goals to Ronaldo, double to Funadze, and also Ben Wayne off of the bench. He picked up a goal, continuing that good form from that cup game. Very dominant display and thankfully picked up a win. They grabbed a goal back late there, did the home team, but it was only a consolation to be fair with the financial situation at the club. 
that's actually probably quite handy with clean sheet bonuses and whatnot. So it's been pretty good off the back of the end of last week, apart from the fact that we did drop those points against Adelaide United. That's probably the worst result we've had, even considering that draw with the All Whites. Still on top of the A leg, eight points clear of Sydney FC and McCarthy FC. And hopefully, if we can pick up a win over those guys in the second game of today's episode, might get out to a 10 to 11 point gap. And if that's the case halfway through the season, it would take a fair old bottle job for us not to win the league. And because of that, it might be a good time potentially to try and do some selling with the financial situation. Could be a good time to try and blood some players into the club if we do need to get some on lower wages for those high earners. And it could be a good time with that big lead, surely, even if we bring some new players into the club, we won't blow a lead that big with the players that we should be able to bring in should still have one of the strongest teams in the A-League with the players that are in our scouting centre. So that's how things are going in the A-League with AFC Auckland and also with the All-Whites. And coming up today, our last two games before we hit the halfway mark, first up, take on the Melbourne Victory, who at times have been up second or third on the ladder this season. That's been actually the case quite a bit. And behind us, as you can see, quite a tight race for the positions in between second and six, there's not many points in between those teams who are fighting for the Asian Confederation football places, the ones that are from Australia. But Melbourne Victory have been good at times this season. Definitely a team who don't draw games. Seven wins and six losses. But they are a team who at times in the past in the save have given us a few hugs. We'll just check here the previous meetings. Pretty good against them last season. But season before that actually struggled just a little bit, copying a 4-1 loss in the A-League at home, surprisingly, and even the season before that, we lost to them over in Melbourne in the first season, a draw of late, it's been a bit better, so hopefully that will continue in today's episode where we take these guys on, and just checking on their recent form, they come to this one off the back of a 3-2 loss to the Phoenix, so hopefully after we beat those guys quite well at the end of last week, albeit there was a red card in that game, we can do something similar and pile on the New Zealand misery on the Australian teams, I've still got some decent players there and quite a promising one in terms of the All Whites in Josh Pickering. We'll see how long he lasts there at Melbourne Victory. A player I believe Southampton have been after when transfer windows have been open in the past, albeit it doesn't look like that's the case at the moment. He's someone to keep an eye out on in terms of future All White selection. No doubt he'll get in there at some stage with that good potential, but hopefully we can pick up three points here before we take on Sydney FC, who currently find themselves in second on the table. Hopefully won't need to come back in between games in today's episode and just go forward to that second one. That one, though, is away from home. Could be a bit trickier these days. They're managed by Arthur Papas Ufuk Tule. He got the sack at the end of last season, but of late their form has been pretty good. Three wins from the last four games in the A-League. The only drop points did come against Melbourne City. So certainly a team in quite good form. But Sydney FC are a team we've had the wood over so far in this entire save. We can't actually check previous meetings just yet. But I'm pretty sure Sydney are a team that we've never lost to. Kind of like the Wellington Phoenix. Not actually even sure if we've even drawn with them. So hopefully that's a record we can keep up in that second game of today's episode. And as I said, start to build a really nice gap on top of the table just in case we do need to do a bit of a fire sale in terms of our assets here at AFC Auckland, in case we do have an issue with the administration and how that could loom over the club. But we'll come back shortly and get stuck in to the first game of today's episode. Just one concern going into it in terms of injuries. Ivan Dabango, he's got a damaged knee cap. It's actually quite a big injury. He's out for three to four weeks. So it does mean that Nathan Lobo is our first choice left back for today's episode and coming up from the under-19s. Paris Dudley, he makes his way back into the first team as he tends to do when there is an injury to a first team player. Tomislav Barisic, who was at the club earlier this season, he went back out on loan. Probably wasn't the greatest idea, albeit that might not have been the worst thing now that our wage budget has been reduced. But Paris Dudley on the bench with that injury to Dubango and will come back shortly and hopefully stay unbeaten this season in the A-League as we take on the victory. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. As I said before, with Dubango being injured, Lobo at left back and Dudley on the bench. Also, Elliot starts as well as Baker at right back and in the deep line playmaker. All that's off the back of the most recent international window. Curtis and Beale are quite tired. Melbourne victory in the pink are going with a 4 3 3 of gone with the black because just wasn't too sure what they might show up wearing here. 
with the whole not quite the right color jersey situation with us here at AFC Auckland in the game, but hopefully we can pick up a win and build that gap on top of the league. And just over the halfway point of the first half, we eventually get the first title of this one, Fernando with free kick he takes. Shorty finds Baker, goes down rather softly there inside the box off of a tackle from Insera. We'll see if this does actually get given as a penalty because that looked a little bit sketchy. Baker might have been making the most of that one, but apparently the penalty does still get awarded. So Baker there kind of milks that one for us. Bruno Fernandez style, and it is going to be Ronald who will take it, just bashes that one past one of our former players in gold, and actually noticed that Scott Busselage getting a start today for Melbourne victory, but that is a decent start, first title of the game so far, victory, haven't been up to too much, and thankfully we eventually take advantage of it, albeit for a slightly dodgy penalty to go one up. And just as we're about to make our way into the last five minutes of this first half, we eventually get another highlight in this game. And you get for Nadze. He is on the ball down the left-hand side this time from open play. Baker, of course, who earned that penalty. He finds Sukumoto. Nice ball out there to Fernadze. Can he try and put this one into the back of the net? It actually takes a deflection and falls to run out quite nicely. But I think the Abbasalaj comes up with a really good save. Does the former AFC Auckland man. We'll see if something's going to happen off the back of that. Elliot's running backwards. I think that highlight might end. And it's still 1-0, just shy of half time. Just checking here on player fitness and ratings. To be fair, I think everyone out there is doing a pretty decent job. Certainly not the most entertaining game so far. The only goal coming for a slightly questionable penalty. If you're a Melbourne Victory fan, thankfully, Nick Baker it got awarded to the bit of selling there. And it was some good work from him. And we'll go into the second half with a 1-0 lead. And a very early free kick here in the second half. Fernandez tries to put that one top right corner, not far away. Basilage wasn't going to get to that, but it's still 1 0. And we go just past the hour mark and yet again a free kick here to Fernandez. Tries to put that one top right corner, but that one it dips down and Basilage can make a save. But so far, a lot of our threat in this game is coming from set piece. And now Lobo will take this corner. We'll see if he can pick out Victor Ross. Unfortunately, he can't. And Falami will head that one away. And it is still 1 0 in our favour and off the back of that might just check in here on some player fitness and Fernandez actually picks up a yellow card so we'll bring on De Hotman De Villiers for him and Mikado only going fairly will bring on inform Wayne Train up front make a couple of subs to hopefully put this game to bed and kick on from our 1-0 advantage and just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game and I think it's time for us here to make a couple more substitutions to Cullen Elliott at right back going a bit fairly we'll bring on Sam Curtis for the late stages doing a good job in his first season at AFC Auckland albeit might be his last considering can't be a future all right now. And also we'll bring on Tewa Tema for Sukamoto, seeing as he looks like he could use some game time. Still 1-0 in front. And just making our way into the last 10 minutes of this game, and now Nick Baker goes down to a red hut. Still got one sub left, so Michael Cornelius Beal, he can come on and with a 1-0 lead. Time for us to just start doing a little bit of slowing down the tempo and time wasting. Hopefully make sure we pick up all three points. And we are inside the last five minutes of this game now. We'll just see how long there is an injury time. Four minutes. Been a pretty average watch, honestly. Not too much happening. And most of the danger we saw from our highlights did come from set piece. We win because of that slightly debatable penalty. Won by Nick Baker. Put away by Ronaldo. And in the end, that was the difference maker. Based on overall stats, we deserve that win. Because Melbourne victory did not get up to much at all. In fact, I don't even think we saw a shot from them in terms of the match engine. But we'll take that a solid 1-0 win, albeit certainly not quite at our best. We'll even tell the guys didn't play as well as I know we can. And for now, we take an 11-point gap on top of the league. And we'll come back shortly and see if the gap's still that big. And if we can extend it when we take on second place, Sydney FC. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. Sydney FC at home are going with a 4-3-3 of interest. Sebastian Piscali is the defensive midfielder, of course, a player we got rid of in the past transfer window. And they also come to this one off the back of a 2-1 win over the Phoenix. That gap on top of the table is now down to 7 points. We're back to full strength in most positions. Still got Lobo at left back, but Curtis and Beal, they can start this one. And a win here would take us 10 points clear. Nice position to be in halfway through the season. And it hasn't taken long for the first highlight of this game. A throw in here and it is inside of the final third. Lobo finds Fernadze and gets the ball back and has a nice run here. Inside the box takes on the shot, but unfortunately it's too high. Still nil all. And only a few minutes off the back of that, we are still on the attack. This time a corner on the other side. Lobo picks out Courtney Perkins, but unfortunately probably would prefer Victor Ross. That hit is off target. Still nil all at the 15 minute mark. And in fact, very short left back of that corner yet. Again, we have a throw in here, albeit this time a bit further back, but quite quickly make our way 
inside the box. Bernard Zay back to Lobo. Those two so far have been quite heavily involved. Sukamoto there tries to score a nice goal like he did last week. That time off target on the front foot, but still nil all. And we're inside the last five minutes here of this first half. Things are certainly quieting down off the back of our hot start. And BTV Sydney FC have actually got the only shot off on target so far in this game. At a very late highlight in three minutes of added time. Beal, he's on the ball. It finds Sukamoto and now Curtis on a yellow card. Beal, what can he do? We'll line up a shot and that one comes off the crossbar. Fernandze tries to loop that back into the mix. But unfortunately, Gil can claim that one. For Sydney FC, so a good late chance for us there, unfortunately, can't quite hit the target. That's been our downfall so far in the first half, and it's nil all. And a couple of defenders here on yellow cards at half time. So we'll deal with that. Cullen Elliott can come on it right back. And young Brian Galbraith, he's after more game time. Otherwise, might need to look at loaning him out, which to be fair, might not be too bad with that wage budget situation, but just those two subs at half time. And hopefully we can get some shots on target as it's nil all of now. In fact, there's a corner here in our favor. Victor Ross tries to get on the end of that one. They do hit it away there to Sydney FC through King, but thankfully Sukamoto's back there to tidy things up. And Elliot will look to make some impact here off of the bench. Plays that back to Victor Ross. And Elliot will now find Ronaldo just on the edge of the box. Now squares that one for Jonathan Mercado. He doesn't score many goals, does our new striker, but he puts that one away for his third of the season, and that's exactly what we wanted off the back of a first half where we could not hit the target. Pretty hard to miss the target from that close up, and thankfully, he beats Gil. Nice ball that from Ronald. Boy, I don't want to sell him, but we might need to for the club's future. He sets up that one for Mercado to make it 1-0. And 10 minutes off the back of that opening goal. It's another corner here in our favour. And Lobo will line this one up. Hopefully can pick out the head of Victor. So he can't. Pascali actually heads that one away, no doubt. Knows all our set-piece routines. We eventually find Ronaldo down that right-hand side. And he puts that one bottom right corner. Albeit it will be given as a FIFA corn own goal. The peppercorn couldn't quite grind his way away from that. That's a terrible dad joke, Sean. What are you doing? But Ronaldo there... Pretty much set that one up himself to be for you. Good passing here to keep the ball in space. Mercado to Galbraith and Renal Galbraith there a bit harsh. He doesn't get an assist, but apparently Peppercorn made sure that one found the back of the net as we make it 2-0. And just about to make our way into the last 20 minutes of this game, and I think it's now time for us to bring on some young players to get match ratings while they can. So we'll give Paris Dudley some game time at left back in place of Nathan Lobo going fairly on a 6.4. And also, we might bring on here some young attackers. Me, De Hotman de Villiers can come on for Fernadze. And we might also take off Max Caputo. He is quite injury prone most of the time for Justin Keat. There'll be all our subs used with a 2 0 lead. And only a couple of minutes on from those final couple of subs, we do have the ball here, albeit deep inside of our own half. Hopefully, one more goal here to put this game to bed just in case Sydney do grab one more back. They might have a chance to potentially take something off us if that is the case, but on the attack here, Keith tries to square that one for Ronell, but unfortunately, that one takes a big old block from a Sydney FC defender, albeit might have a chance now from a corner. Dudley taking these with Lobo off the field. Victoros there, good header, but Gill read that one being headed into the ground. Still 2-0, and this highlight actually going to continue. Gill taking his time here on the ball, and we'll pump this deep. Hopefully, we can win this in the air. We do through Beal, albeit to Hotman de Villiers. Can't quite control it. And now they have it down the right-hand side through Peppercorn. He plays that one over now to Gubu Breach. And he tries to play that one into the mix of Sukamoto, though. Cuts that out nicely. A nice ball forward there to Justin Key. As we now have to do something on the counter-attack. Nice ball that for Renaud and Gill with a good stop to be fair. Might have been going too high anyway, but he just makes sure of it and keeps it at 2-0. But a couple of chances for us. From this highlight, Ronald with the corner. Victoros this time, but over the bar. And it's still 2-0 as we make our way into the last 10 minutes. And we've just made our way into the last 5 minutes of this game. And a highlight does start here. A goal kick in our favour, which Paulson pumps out to Dudley at left back. But 2-0 in front, hopefully, can just keep hold of the ball here. And just settle things down. Keith tries to find Mercado, but can't quite. It might be a chance here for Sydney FC to maybe make things interesting late in this one. They now hold the ball down the left-hand side through Devlin. I'm pretty sure is their hot prospect these days at that club, but they're still in defense. Eventually, they have tried and pass this ball into our half. Some good short, sharp passing here, though. And they find some space down their right hand side. Square that nicely for Amina Titus. And they do get a goal back here off the back of that. We'll just make sure that Cornelius Beal is not easing off tackles. We did that with a 2 0 lead 
might not be the worst idea to make sure he's actually going to get stuck in now to make sure Sydney FC hopefully don't get a goal back in this one or really time wasting. So don't need to do that. But that is a well worked goal there from Sydney FC to make it 2 1 as we now make our way into the last couple of minutes. And there is a highlight here from the restart. Thankfully, we do have possession, but hopefully. We can just hold on to the ball here and make sure Sydney don't get another chance. Because it would feel a bit harsh here if they did grab something from this game with a 2-0 lead late. But we eventually find Cullen Elliott in space for us now. Down our right-hand side, just inside the box. Tries to find Mikado there at the far post. Good chance for him to pick up a double. But that one goes over the bar. And in fact, right off the back of that, they do now have a goal kick. They are going to now start to time waste a bit more frequently just in case. Because lots of highlights later in this one. And we thankfully win the ball at the back there, Galbraith. He can out jump Patrick Wood, a player that we nearly signed before thinking Max Capujo might be a better idea. I think we were right on that one. We pump that one deep, but it finds its way to Gill and Gull. So Sydney FC here might get a chance to make it two, or which, as I said before, would be very frustrating. Galbraith wins that in the air, but Fahida Adamson can get on the end of that one. Yet again, they try and fizz that one into the mixture. It finds its way through to Ford and Alex Paulson. I think saved that. Might have also come off the crossbar. That was a bit of a weird highlight. But we are now on the counter-attack. De Hotman de Villiers makes his way down that left-hand side. Tries to put into the mixer. We'll get a corner. But Sydney FC there through forward with a chance to actually grab something from this game. Albeit still time left. Four minutes of injury time. Right now with the corner. Albeit thankfully now that we're time wasting frequently. Is taking his time over it. Unfortunately can't quite link up with a teammate, but is back on the ball, squares it, but he was offside, unfortunately, to I think Mikado there, with a good chance to pick up another goal, but thankfully, that will do it, we hold on for a 2-1 win, lots of late highlights there, off the back of that goal, to Nathan Amanatidis, but thankfully, before then, to start the second half, we got some goals, through Mikado, and also, a own goal off the shot, from Ronaldo Peppercorn, with an own goal, so we just do enough there to keep up our good record against Sydney FC and pick up a 2-1 win. And it does mean for now we'll be 11 points clear on top of the A-League table. So fair to say we weren't quite our best in those two games during today's episode, but thankfully just do enough to pick up wins there over both the Melbourne Victory and Sydney FC. And we are still 11 points clear on top of the A-League. As you can see, their teams like the Wellington Phoenix, they did not pick up a win held to a free or draw in the distance derby, if it's still them and not us. But also the day after, it was McCarthy FC taking on Melbourne City, and they lost 3-1. That could have closed the gap to just 10 points. But because they lost, we are now 11 points clear of Sydney FC at the halfway point of the season. And with a very good goal differential advantage over those other teams, it would take some bottle job from here not to pick up the title. So we'll see what the financial situation of the club is when we come back for tomorrow's episode, as I said, hopefully that will be around about the youth intake in January. Hopefully between now and then, we can get on a bit of a League Cup run. That could also help out the club in terms of its finances. But if we are in quite a bit of trouble with that big lead on top of the table, it might be a good time to actually get rid of some players and bring in some new ones. As with such a big lead, you'd still like to think we can hold on and pick up the A-League trophy this season, albeit it might just hurt our chances a bit of potentially winning some of the cup competitions. But that will do it for today's episode. A little bit of doubt hanging over the club at the moment with the financial situation, but thankfully on the pitch, going well. 11 points clear at the halfway stage of the league season. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video, and if you haven't done so or really are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. For tomorrow's episode, as I said, probably going to come back in January for one of those games, albeit if we get on a bit of a run in the League Cup. First up, we take on Avondale. Could be a situation like last season where we do the finals in that competition, especially with the money, which could be quite useful from that competition. But we'll come back in January if everything goes to plan and things don't turn to poo between now and then with a the youth intake as well as potentially some transfer business. So until tomorrow for that, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.